What's up everybody? Pumpkin here. So I have some more cards to go over today. Um, CDPR said in the past that they were doing six a day, but for whatever reason, only four cards were revealed today. Um, so that's kind of unfortunate. Um, maybe we'll get two more cards tomorrow. I have no idea. Um, yeah, let's get right into it. So our first card today is the Flying Redanian. This is a syndicate card, 10 provisions, four strength, horde nine on turn end, summon this unit from your deck or graveyard to a random allied row. Um, so the idea is you want to get to Horde 9, you want to obtain 9 coins um, attached to your leader, uh, and then this card comes out of your deck, similarly to how Roach comes out of your deck when you play a gold card. Um, how hard is it to get Horde 9? Well, with the new leader that we saw uh, in the last video, which is this leader right here, where your order on your ability or on your leader is to gain 9 crowns, uh, if you play this leader, you will immediately get nine crowns and you will immediately pull out the Flying Redanian. Do you want to do that? Eh, no, you don't want to do that in round one. Typically, playing a leader that has a one-time activation uh, ability and it's like a big ability, you typically want to save this for round three because, you know, if your opponent also has one and you don't have one, well, you're at a disadvantage. So, yeah, typically you want to save this for round three or maybe round two if you're bleeding, you're getting blood. Uh, but, yeah, usually you don't want to use it in round one. Um, so yes, that is a way to get this card out. I don't suggest it in round one. Um, are there other ways to get, uh, nine coins? Yeah, there are. You play pickpocket for plus six and then you have to get three in another way. And then this card comes right out. Um, it also comes out of your graveyard. So this is similar to Sarah's, um, or really, really, really old school, uh, Gwent where Roach actually came out of your graveyard, uh, when you did play a gold card. Uh, but only some of you guys will remember that. Uh, a, a more common card, well, it's not very common, but you might know of the card, Sarah's. Whenever you resurrect a unit, Sarah's comes out of the graveyard. This is similar to that. It's a similar mechanic, except instead of uh, based on the resurrection, it's based on Horde. Um, remember, Horde, you don't actually spend the coins, right? So if you get to nine coins and pull this out, you don't have to spend nine to pull it out. It just happens, right? It's just the requirement for this ability to go off. So... Yeah, it's carryover in round two and three. If you pair this with Roach in your deck, you have roughly seven tempo in round one, which is quite good. It's a lot. Uh, it's similar to like Elrin plus Roach and like an Elf Elfskoyatel deck. Um, if you can somehow have consume in your deck, say muzzle your opponent's slizzard and then peller it, removing the lock, uh, you can then start consuming this card every single turn uh, and it'll keep coming back, assuming you don't spend your coins. And yeah, you'll basically have a Syndicate Ruin. Is that good? I don't know. Just give it to exactly monsters and muzzle their slizzard and you're good to go, right? Uh, yeah. Memes aside, yeah. It's a good card. It will see play. There will be decks that are built for this card. Uh, not 100% around it, but this is going to be one of the main driving cards to the deck. So yeah, this this card will definitely be, uh, see play. Day one, I'm definitely going to be playing this card. It might be the first deck I try to build because... Who doesn't like free carryover? Uh, and do remember, all your coins don't carry over. So if you have nine coins in round one and you pass, you don't just get this at the start of round two. Um, it carries over half rounded down. So if you have nine coins and you pass, you will have four coins the following turn. If you start the turn with pickpocket or something, uh, this will come out. Um, yeah. Do note, there are counters to this card. If your opponent plays the Banishing Bomb, if your opponent plays Regis, if your opponent plays Wily and is either playing Croc, Ethne, or has some kind of one-point uh, engine on the board, uh, they can permanently remove this card from the game, uh, in which case you will not be getting this as carryover later on. Uh, also, Muzzle. Muzzle has been the, the big card for this patch. Muzzle seems to counter everything. Muzzle... Ah, maybe Muzzle gets nerfed. I, I'm actually curious if you guys think Muzzle should get nerfed. I, I don't think it should be. Uh, it's a pretty expensive tech card, and you can only play it one time. Um, but yeah, Muzzle's going to be popular. Muzzle does counter this card. Uh, if you are playing Syndicate and your opponent plays this card, uh, you could, in theory, have two of these. You could have yours, and you could Muzzle your opponents, and then, bam, you have two of these. Cool. Great. Uh, do remember locks don't work on this. If you lock this, nothing happens. Um, we know this because if you lock Sarah's or you lock Phoenix, it still comes out. So don't lock this card. I mean, you can, but nothing's going to happen. So yeah, good card. It will see play. People will build decks around this card. Yeah, good card. Moving right along, we have Tide Cloak Ransackers. This card is four provisions, two strength, 
Deploy damage an enemy unit by two. Death blow getting two coins. Horde five. Trigger the death blow even if the enemy unit survives. So uh, the horde five, we're seeing another horde mechanic. Uh, horde, horde seems pretty popular, and I and I, I like it. Um, it incentivizes you to save your coins. Um, use these horde abilities, and then potentially uh, play your coins towards the end of a round. Um, so worst case scenario, if you play this card, damage an enemy unit by two. If you don't get the death blow and you don't have the horde. Uh, it's a wolf pack. It's a two that deals two. Is that good? No, that's terrible. Um, if you get the death blow off, it's a six for four. Is that good? Yeah, that's not bad. Uh, in terms of like points, that's on par with like a pirate captain in SK, and that card's really good in like a crackless. So, uh, w without the horde, yeah, it's it's a pretty decent card. How how consistently can you pull off uh, death blow two? Huh? I mean. I pretty consistently pull off Sentinels in a Squaretail deck that doesn't run any damage, right? So, like, if I'm not running Ethne, I'll play Danalus with Sentinels, and they go off. Yeah, I think this card is good. Uh, with the Horde, uh, it's it's very good. I, I do think people will play this. The only reason you would not play this in a Syndicate list is all the other 4-drops are better. That That's going to be a tall order to pull off because th this, this card's good. Um, it's a six for four. Uh, the horde five is not going to be too hard to pull off. I mean, we, we saw one leader, which gives you nine. We have pickpocket. We have other coin mechanics that are in the game. Well, that have been revealed and probably more so in the future. Um, it, it shouldn't be too hard and it's not the type of card where you have to play it really early on. Um, you can just hold this to like the middle of the round and then play it. So yeah, I, I think it's a good card. It's a good card. Uh, maybe it doesn't see uh, play in like a swarm syndicate list because all the bronzes are super tight because they're all running like really heavy swarm cards uh, and this card doesn't swarm. Um, but outside of a swarm list, yeah, I'd probably play this card. I don't see why not. It's just a good card. Uh, moving along, we have Bincy Blummerholt. This card is 10 provisions, 4 strength, range whenever you gain crowns, boost self by 1 for each crown gain. So... If you don't take into account the leader that we revealed the other day, which immediately gains nine crowns, uh, this card's pretty bad, right? You play this card, and then you play, I don't know, the previous card. You gain two crowns. This goes to six. It's super slow. It gets removed by any kind of four damage ability. But that leader does exist. So you can kind of look at this as like a Harold Dagger. Right, so Harold Dagger is a four point body plus eight damage. And assuming you do the eight damage, uh, the unit gets boosted by eight. So it's a tw uh, it's effectively a 20 point play. Uh, with this and the leader that I just mentioned before, it's what, nine, nine, four. So it's two points better. Um, so it's a 22 point play, but it's a little different. So when I originally started talking about this card on stream, people were saying it's strictly better. Well, it's not strictly better. Um, it can be better. It can also be worse. So th the reason for this is, remember, you have to spend your crowns, right? If you play that leader and you go from zero to nine crowns and this card gets plus nine, um, you now have nine crowns on your leader. And if that's your final play and you can't spend those crowns, then it is not a 22 point play. It is a 13 point play. And that's really bad. Um, so you need to be able to spend those crowns. So what you're going to need to do if you want to have this as your final play is you need to have a fee card on the board that will spend your coins uh, when you get those plus nine coins. So yeah, that that's really important. And it's going to it's gonna um, create some interesting like round three towards the, uh, the final cards, um, some interesting lines. So from your opponent's perspective, if they have tall removal... What they need to do is kill all the fee cards, because if they kill all the fee cards, then this can't be their final play. Uh, if it is their final play, they don't get the pl they don't get to utilize the nine uh, crowns or coins, whatever. Um, but on the flip side, if they play this or, right, right, so you you kind of understand what I'm going with this. You either have to play it early, one turn early, and then spend the crowns a turn after, or you have to play a fee engine before you play this card and have this as your final play. Uh, both lines open yourself up to counterplay. If you play this one turn early as your second to last play, your opponent can use tall removal and kill this card. Um, if you play this as your last play and your opponent removes your fee engine, then you're not going to be able to spend your nine. So, yeah, I mean, 
we'll, we'll, we'll see how that, uh, that all works out. But, um, yeah, you, you can see how this is not strictly better than Dagger Herald. Um, the scenario where it would be is if you can get like four or five fee engines on the board and your opponent is just overwhelmed and they can't kill them all, in which case you can just hold on to this card for your final play and then it is better than a Dagger Herald. But my guess is that's probably not going to be the case. But yeah, we'll see. Is this card good? Um, well, with the leader that gains nine crowns, yeah, this card's good. Um, yeah, ass assuming you can get some fee engines, I see no reason not to. It's a good card. Um, you're definitely not going to play this outside of that leader. Well, I guess it depends on if the other leaders have explosive uh, ways to get coins all at once. If they can, then yeah, I guess you play this too. Um, so I guess we'll have to see the other leaders. But from what we know right now, this card is very good with the current leader that has been seen. Will this card see play? Yes. Yes, it will. Good card. Moving along. This is the last card for today. Um... Yeah, this card is scary. Yeah, uh, this card's four provisions, three strength, deploy range, gain vitality for a duration equal to your crown count, tribute three, boost self by your crown count instead. So tribute, once again, you have to spend those crowns. So the idea of this card, best case scenario uh, for the, the second ability with tribute, you get to nine crowns, you spend three, you have six left, uh, and this gets plus six and you're getting nine, you're playing a nine point unit. It's not really a nine for four because you're spending three crown and that's roughly the equivalent of three provision. So it's really like a nine for seven. Is a nine for seven good? Oh, okay. Or you can make it a six for four. Uh, is, is a six for four good? Yeah, that's not bad. Uh, that's similar to the uh, card we mentioned earlier. And from what we've seen with uh, the Flying Redanian and the card prior to this, uh, with the upcoming leader, there are going to be decks that go to nine very quickly. Uh, so you can afford to play this in like round one, turn one, after you play a leader so that you can get um, all nine vitality procs or the tribute three. Now, what I think people don't realize, I think the second ability is actually a trap in most cases. So the reason is this card, remember, if you play this and you have nine crowns, right, with the other leader, let's say you play this on turn one, it has the potential to go up to 12. Is a 12 for four good? Yeah, it's like the best card in the game. Um, there's no card that even comes remotely close to that. A 12 for four is like game breaking. Um, do keep in mind, it goes from three to four on turn one. Your opponent can play a Frit, Regis, any other card that does four damage or uh, multiple cards that do four damage or like five damage to turn after. Um, so yeah, uh, there are ways to deal with it. But the way I see it is we've seen other cards that demand answers like... Um, I'm key, I'm key, uh, the ranged card that gets two crowns a turn. We have the Flying Redania, Redanian. We have the Resilience card that we showed two or three days ago. Um, and there's probably a few more engines. Basically, what I'm saying is there's a lot of high priority engines that your opponent's going to want to remove. Um, if they're spending their removal, right, because you only have a finite amount of removal, if they're spending that removal on a four, periv bleh, four provision bronze, you're pretty happy because it means your other cards are probably living. And if they don't spend it on it, well, this is a 12. That's insane. It's a 12 for four. There's no, that's, that's mind blowing. Um, do keep in mind, this is a muzzleable target. It's not a word, but let's pretend it is. Uh, if you muzzle this and it did have that nine vitality, it's a 24 point muzzle. 24 point muzzle. Yeah, that's pretty good. Um, granted, uh, <laughs> it means you're not muzzling any of their other cards, like the fr uh, Flying Redanian or uh, I'm Key or the Resilience card or any other engine they might be playing. Also, this is a bronze, so they can play two of them. So yeah, you might muzzle the first one, but they can play a second one. And my guess is they can probably kill it with the, uh, I don't know, nine provision well, it's a four that deals four. If you spend the tribute six, you can kill the card. So you have that, I guess. Uh, but maybe they just muzzle it back. I don't know. I mean, you muzzle first, they muzzle back. You have to wait till five so that they can't counter muzzle. I don't know. There's going to be muzzle wars everywhere. Maybe Francesca muzzle will be tier one because she can muzzle twice. Wow. Uh, but yeah, this, this card is... Uh, uh, unless, I mean, I've talked about this card with chat and some other people. I think it is probably the best four provision card in the game. 
yeah. Uh, I went through all the SK cards. SK have the best bronzes, period. At least for the four-piece slots, it's not even close. Um, and this card is much better. None of the, the bronzes in SK have a 12-point ceiling. That doesn't exist. I mean, there's really no card at 4, 5, or 6 that has that kind of... I mean, I guess, like, Defenders and Scoia'tael with the Dwarf. But, like, you're... Yeah, I, I guess. But you have to boost it ahead of time. Ah, but this is four provisions, that card. Six provisions. Uh, yeah, this card's insane. Uh, is this card good? Well, yeah, it, it's in... Yeah. Auto-include. Every Syndicate deck. I mean... Okay, let's say you don't play that leader that goes to nine. Let's say you have four crowns. You play this card. If your opponent doesn't remove it, it's a seven for four. Is that good? Yeah, that's good. Um, this is auto-include in every Syndicate deck ever, forever. Um, this card, I'm pretty sure, would still be auto-include at five provision. I'm actually surprised this card's not five provisions. Um my guess as to why it's four provisions and not five provisions is CDPR wants Syndicate to see play. Um, what you don't want to do is have a new faction come out and then it's complete garbage and nobody plays it, right? That's a terrible feeling for both the players and the company. So if you make it a little bit too good, well, it'll see a lot of play. People will figure everything out and then it'll get nerfed. Whatever. That's fine. Um, but yes, this card will see a lot of play. It'll see play in probably every syndicate deck this card's insane uh, i i i don't know how many more times i can say that uh this card's really good um yeah that's all i have for you guys today only four cards uh it's kind of unfortunate i do have a card reveal tomorrow so that's going to be fun it's a dual scoyatel card uh, i'm not going to give any more information than that um it's a very good card too um yeah i hope you guys enjoyed the video and i'll see you guys on the next one